Hi everyone, this is Sam Gabriel with Docker and in this video I want to show you how you can uh, use Jenkins to integrate uh, with Docker Enterprise Edition and how you can uh, generate your builds uh, from Jenkins and how you can uh, utilize the client bundle to be able to um, push your images to DTR. So the uh, diagram that we have here on the screen we basically have um, a cluster. Uh, I, I got UCP Universal Control Plane, a Docker Trusted Registry. Uh, I have a worker node called L Worker Linux 3. And on here, I'm actually building the, um, I've created a container with Jenkins running inside of it uh, just for demo purposes. In your, uh, in production environments, you typically want to have your uh, Jenkins servers outside. Your, uh, your your UCP cluster, whether running on a, a basic license, maybe perhaps on a, a, a separate node on itself or part of a, a separate cluster. So what we're gonna do today is basically on my, um, my MacBook, I'm going to generate, um, or I'm gonna commit uh, and, and do a git push to a GitHub repo and then, and then what we're going to do, we're going to create the builds from Jenkins and uh, push uh, the image that we build to, uh, to DTR. Uh, there's an extension to this, of course. You can uh, do a continuous deployment here. We're only doing continuous integration, uh, but you can al always also create a continuous uh, deployment uh, workflow as well from DTR to deploy directly onto um, UCP and the worker nodes in the cluster. So. With that, let's go over here. I want to talk uh, just briefly about creating um, uh, or generating a client bundle. So this is the main screen for UCP. Um, just quickly, just show you the nodes that I have here. So I've got um, uh, UCP and I've got DTR, so the manager, and then uh, DTR, the Docker Trusted Registry. I have a few Linux worker nodes, a couple of Windows worker nodes. So if we go to users, I've created a user called Jenkins. And if we can take if we take a look here, if you go to client bundle, you can actually create or generate a client bundle. What a client bundle does is it lets you uh, communicate with the cluster directly from the command line on your local machine. So as a quick example, if I go here to my terminal, um, and if I do a quick Docker version, uh, it's showing this is the local Docker for Mac running on my on my machine here. But if I want to communicate with, so if I do a Docker PS, I can see there's nothing running on my local Mac. If I want to communicate with that UCP cluster, I need that client bundle. So I already downloaded that, and actually when you uh, when you create one, it's going to download. When you hit the, this button, it's going to create a new one for you, and uh, it'll download to the uh, to your computer and you can uh, go to that folder. So I already have that downloaded, so I'm just gonna go straight to that uh, folder. And from here, if I do an LS, you can see a bunch of things, but what you wanna do is source that environment script. And if you do a Docker version, now you can see that my client side is, is still the, the Mac version, which is fine, that's the client side but then the server now I'm talking to docker EE and and you can see all the specifics here if I do a docker PS now now you can see I'm talking directly to the um, to the cluster so as you can see here I have an image docker solutions Jenkins this is the container that's running uh, that's running the build server Jenkins and uh, we're gonna use that but that's that's just a quick overview of the client bundle now, if we go to the uh, Jenkins dashboard, first thing you want to do is create a, a build to uh, grab that client bundle. So let's go over here and I'll walk you through this. So if we go to the configuration for that client bundle, um, you need to specify the username, uh, a few parameters that I've pulled, put in here. Uh, but basically, if you look at the, uh, the shell script, so we're looking to uh, grab the uh, that client bundle. Um, 
we're looking to see if we already have it or not. If we don't have it, then we're going to go grab it. So we build an authentication token with the username and password for the Jenkins user that uh, we created earlier. And when you run this build, it's going to grab that bundle um, <clears throat> and store it locally in, in the folder, in this folder here. Actually, inside that folder is going to create a new folder called UCP bundle, where it's going to store all the, uh, the credentials for the, for the client bundle. So with that, we can just quickly build this to demo it. <clears throat> so let's build it. So we build successfully. And in this case, client bundle already exists, so it's exiting. But you know, if you're doing it the first time, it's going to grab a new a new bundle for you. So if we go back to the uh, to the to the projects and look at the next piece, uh, let's go back here. I have a simple example here of a Python script that I'm creating a, a, an image from, and uh, and we're going to use that to to push to DTR. So looking at the build here, um, <clears throat> just one parameter for the DTR Jenkins password. So that's the password for the user, for the Jenkins user that we created. Um, and that user is, uh, is, is the same user across the cluster. So UCP and DTR, it's the same user. So here I'm specifying the GitHub repo that I have over here. And maybe we'll take a quick look at it. So it's very simple. It's got a, uh, a Python script that's very simple. It's one line. Uh, Jenkins is cool, eh? So it's one line, and it has a, a Docker file here. So we're grabbing from Alpine, and we're grabbing that, putting the, uh, the command there in there to run it. So that's the GitHub repo that I have. So I'm referencing it over here. I'm pulling every two minutes to see if there's a new uh, new commit in GitHub so be able to uh, rebuild this automatically. And here's the shell script that makes all the, uh, creates all the magic basically. So here we get the um, uh, we create a few variables, environment variables. Um, as part of the container you can specify those as environment variables or you can just specify them here in the script directly. So the DTR URL, the Docker cert path for the um, for the client bundle that we specified earlier that we built earlier, so that's the path, and and the Docker host that's where I'm running the uh, running Jenkins. <clears throat> so from here I'm gonna create a build so Docker build command um, with the repo name that I that I created, uh, Docker listing the images just to make sure we uh, we actually created it, and um, logging into DTR with my Jenkins username and password and finally pushing the image that was built straight to DTR. Cool. So that um, that will be fine. That should run no problem. Uh, we can do a quick quick run here. But since, since there's nothing really changed in the uh, actual uh, script so um, nothing really has changed but we can make a quick change here <clears throat> so if I go back to my Mac and go back to the folder that where I have the docker file this to make it cleaner um, so here's where I'm building the app uh, so you can see here I can go in and change Jenkins cool pie and Jenkins all right so I'll just update this Let's see we have something to Commit, so commit. Uh, 
Something wrong. I misspelled it. Push. All right, perfect. So now, just uh, push this new version of our app to uh, to GitHub. So if we go to GitHub and refresh that, you should be able to see another iteration. It's perfect. There we go. So now let's see what happens here. I could technically wait a couple of minutes for this to automatically uh, build, or I can just build it again. So let's just build it. Let's take a look at the output. It says success. Okay. So now let's go to Docker Trusted Registry over to the Jenkins demo repo that we we're talking about. Let's look at the images. Um, and here's the latest image that, uh, that we just pushed uh, a few minutes ago. So <clears throat> it appears here, I've also enabled automatic uh, uh, vulnerability scanning. So on push, it will automatically scan the image since it's the same, uh, it's pretty much the same image, just changed that you can see just a minor change in the uh, in the code here, it's probably going to be the same uh, vulnerabilities that we see. Um, so if we go to my worker node that uh, that I've been using as the build server or the container inside of it as the build server, so if I do a Docker uh, Docker PS. I can now. Docker. I'm going to log into my DTR. Oops. Let's see. Let's use the same credentials. And let's run this, so docker run. Jenkins, Jenkins demo. Uh, let's put it in interactive mode so we can see, see it print on the screen. And let's put the final, the last tag that we have here. Maybe this is the tag. There we go. So as you can see, we've uh, successfully run the app manually. Of course, again, like I mentioned earlier, you can uh, create a, a continuous deployment workflow and have it run automatically. I just wanted to show you um, the uh, continuous integration piece. So back to the diagram that we talked about earlier. So what we've done in this video is basically uh, built a continuous integration workflow using Jenkins and uh, Docker Enterprise Edition. So from my Mac, I, was, I pushed the code to a GitHub repo. Uh, Jenkins continuously monitors that GitHub repo. And if it sees a new commit, it will um, initiate a, a push to or, or a build for that uh, Docker uh, image uh, from Docker Hub, push it over to DTR and um, to make all this happen and work, you first have to pull the, uh, the client bundle for Docker, um, uh, from the UCP manager uh, for the user that you're working with. So this is to, to show a secure supply chain, uh, perhaps in a uh, subsequent video, I might um, record something where we actually sign, where Jenkins signs the images so you know who actually created these images as they're pushed into DTR. Um, and then you can tell UCP to only run signed images, uh, another layer of security. 
Uh, hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for watching.